Hi all, let's explore another amazing game in the Vienna, the Vienna game, in fact. So this is Leela ID 61007, <laughs> James Bond version. Again, Stockfish 8, so not latest Stockfish. Leela's uh, 60 network is still, you know, evolving and being trained. It's a bigger network, it requires more training. Uh, but this is a very, very interesting game example. So E4, the opening book given, uh, this position, knight c3, knight c6, g3. So here, both engines are by themselves. The time limit is a fast and furious one minute with a one second increment. So white is aiming to reinforce the d5 control here usually. And yeah, black's knight c6 might not actually be. It's a little bit controversial in that if black wanted a c6 and d5 plan, it could be considered slightly delayed compared to knight f6. There are up and down sides, of course, so knight f6, bishop g2, bishop c5, knight g e2, both sides castle, a6, h3. And this looks like a natural move uh, to take away that g4 square from black, uh, to give the bishop h2, to take the the this pin pawn out, out of uh, the line of the bishop. So that f4 can be used later. So f4 is a very king's engine style move, one of my favorite kind of moves. Uh, in chess to gain space, uh, go for an attack as well. D6, we have D3, H6, so that stops this pin, which could be annoying, especially with this bishop over here. It's it's uh, could be a real annoyance. So King H2, getting ready for potentially F4, Knight D4, and in fact uh, White took on D4 and now did play F4, and here uh, there's. A critical moment here, you could argue, that should black actually encourage white to play f5 and try and seize the dark square weaknesses with knight h7. Uh, black actually took here, uh, if, before going into that, if rook e8, this isn't such an easy position to say white's gain, gaining an advantage uh, non-controversially with a move like f5. Uh, in fact, queen f3 might be the most accurate. On uh, a move like f5, it does seem as though, let's let's put f5 on the board. It seems to be the case that it's a committal pawn move. Pawns don't go backwards. It's a committal decision. Can white actually evolve an advantage here? This, this is an example continuation where black might be able to get rid of the dark square bishops and get a clamp on the dark squares. Uh, this kind of scenario, say with the dark square bishops exchanged off, uh, isn't so easy to claim an advantage. You might think the g-file is quite dangerous, but it doesn't seem that easy to claim any any real advantage. Uh, and you know, I was kind of interested in this. Rook e8, is, isn't there a way of showing an advantage? It may be, on deeper analysis, this, this move queen f3 might actually be the way to go. It is in the spirit of d5 control. Uh, the queen is kind of putting pressure on d5 against the potential c6, d5 plan. Furthermore, the queen could later, after uh, this, go to g3. So it's a good pivot square f3 as well. And as an example of queen f3 at work, say c6, knight e2, f5 here, g4. There are significant differences here with the pressure on d5. Uh, for a start, black isn't able to implement that easily the dark square bishop exchange that we saw in, in the other example. And if the queen can park there on g3, white can actually gear up for the move g5 eventually, it seems. For example, like this, gearing up for g5, that vacates e4. And white could, you know, if black gets greedy, white's going to blast through with g5. So it seems uh, queen f3 might actually be... Uh, in the event of rookie eight, might actually be the way to go in this type of position. Okay, but in the event e takes f4, and from a human eye, this give, gives white a lot to play for now. The, the semi-open g file, the g file attack potential if, if g takes. Uh, g takes looks actually a lot more natural than bishop takes in, in some respects. The e5 square, for example, uh, is easier for black to get a grip over. So G takes seems natural, bringing a pawn to, cent to the centre. And it also gives rise to the possibility later of E5, which might chase the knight away and gain further space. We have rook E8, and now queen F3 here, bishop D7, knight E2, bishop B6. 
And here, uh, B3, it looks as though White's getting quite a beautiful double fin chateau position where the potential of playing things like E5 uh, are going to be strong. And maybe as a precursor, C4 to stop even Knight D5 might be even more ideal. So I move like Bishop B2, C4, E5, use the G file, sometimes play D4 to block the Bishop and then use Rook G1. So the prospects are quite large for White here, potentially C6, Bishop B2. Now this looks like a, a weird non-committal move, bishop a5, just okay, discouraging rook e1 for the moment. Knight g3, the bishop is, does seem slightly concerned about e5 here, bishop c7. If black does nothing, if black uh, leaves the bishop eyeing e1 as an example, say bishop c8, it seems the best move is c4 to take away d5 to prepare e5. And this starts to get a bit squishy for black and, and losing a pawn there is not very good. This This doesn't look at all good. Uh, so black actually can, you know, puts the bishop back on c7. Rook a, e1 is permitted, therefore. a5, a4, rook f8. And now d4, so e5 to chase the knight away is on the cards. e5, knight d5, c4, the knight goes back to e7. Uh, if the knight goes to b4 here, f5 looks quite squishy over here. Uh, this looks pretty devastating stuff actually. This kind of position looks visually quite crushing. Why well, it's got a big spatial advantage, form pawn, big prospects of an attack. Uh, so knight e7, f5, d takes, d takes. And against this f6, White's beautifully geared up here with the double fianchetto. Aesthetically it's very nice. And f6 looks crushing if permitted. So black played f6. It's a very committal decision to allow this form pawn on e6, the central pawn here. But if king g8, allowing f6 is even worse. For example, one horrific variation, just getting mated like that, just crashing through like that. Uh, yeah, otherwise the bishop's opening up for e6 check. It's all pretty nasty. So f6, a necessary evil move. But black is on the back foot here. Rook d1, queen e8. So a nice space advantage. King h1, unpinning the knight. B6. And actually, there is the possibility that the knight could have gone to h5 here. White actually permitted bishop takes g3 uh, in this position. Knight h5 is plausible, and probably, actually, it seems pretty strong to go like this. If white is now threatening horrible things, uh, which white is, like building up on the g-file, this looks like a desperate move to play knight takes uh, f5. Uh, yeah, because there's, yeah, it just seems like a huge uh, build up on f6. Rook g8, white well, could build up potentially with things like knight sacks on f6 potentially as well. So if knight takes f5 is the best move, shedding material, that's that's over. Uh, that's, and if we look at this, yes. So queen g4 against knight h5, it's now snapped off though. So in fact, instead of knight h5 being played, queen g4 allowed bishop takes g3 extinguishing knight h5 the downside is here end games have been upgraded here for white with the dark square bishop without a counterpart there are these dark square pawns sitting there fixed which could be targets in this end game also the default is very nice for white at the moment white's liability potentially is f5 that pawn could uh, needs to be protected at the moment we have Rook a7, and now an invasive queen b8. Rook b7, queen f4. Protects f5, though. So white can start to use uh, the d file. And we have bishop e4 protecting f5 even more, freeing up the queen if needed. Queen h5, in fact, queen g4 inviting an exchange of queens. If black refuses this exchange with queen e8, this didn't happen, then rook g1 is, is nasty. For example, this position... Uh, splat, rook takes g7 and bishop takes f6 and the bishop not only supporting the pawn it's supporting the f6 check, discovered check so for example like this is devastating f6 discovered check and that's absolutely devastating for example like that, it's crushing uh, so if we look at this again on queen g4 yeah that's that's pretty nasty, so queen takes g4 was played, so white's advantage here, this bishop the two bishops these dark square pawns affects targets potentially. Very, very nice centralized bishop, very squished bishop. Yeah, this pawn chain is very, very aggressive. We have uh, rook c7, rook d6, 
which would be some rook fd1 when it really controls the possession this is like a former brazilian football team just controlling the whole possession on the pitch just keeping possession and nice coordination there's very very nice coordination of the pieces here rooks doubled that securing that d file possession of that d file c5 is played so okay taking out white's bishop pair we have king g2 the king's coming towards the center king f3 rook c8 king e4 right into the center this seems to be you know capablanca like in capablanca games towards end games the king will gravitate towards the center black's king is not as good clearly it's just passive waiting there so this is a nice perk of this aggressive pawn chain to actually centralize the king here and now yeah these these pawns are potential liabilities to this bishop they're fixed so how can white actually tap into those bishop c1 making way for this maneuver bishop f4 potentially to swap off some rooks and maybe go around hitting this pawn chain eventually we have knight c8 rook d8 rook b to e7 bishop f4 in fact so this bishop's uh potentially on the way to c7 or or other squares of interest there for the dark square pawns in fact after this an exchange of rooks rook d7 and now it looks as though bishop c7 is on the cards knight c6 bishop c7 these pawns are all major targets and in fact after black's next move white has many routes to win this uh, a simple force for one appears to be just rook takes d4 because these pawns are going to fall off uh with you know we've got loads and loads of <laughs> protected past pawns white's got a huge advantage there so rook takes d4 would have done it here i believe so rook d6 though was played this is uh another way bishop d8 supporting this uh e7 potentially uh so rook d7 bishop e7 though actually not pushing the e6 pawn uh yet the king goes a bit further in bishop d6 and again e7 is now potentially on the cards as well of a lot of things g takes here that's desperate h5 it's it's a very desperate scenario the pressure on black is immense now finally e7 threatening rook d8 check rook e8 shedding the c5 pawn knight e2 rook d8 king f7 and the game was uh just adjudicated here as a, as a win for white white's task is fairly uh straightforward here now uh, one way could be just to take and even just give up e7 if needed if it's not even needed king d6 and, and bishop b6 to take this pawn later uh, so that's one route a5 will drop past a pawn uh, will be absolutely decisive so let's go back uh, so rather rather we are actually at the game final end position but uh, if we think about this game uh, a few key points it seems as though yeah the vienna game offers a potential for a small advantage if played uh, correctly cynically uh, in some of those variations it seems with e takes there's fundamental trump cards at work there central pawn majority g file uh, the potential for the attack on the king side led to black giving up the dark square bishop which meant the pawns were weaker later in an end game the central pawn wedge meant that white also had the added benefit of a, a more aggressive king to black's king so a few instructive points a nice positional game i thought uh, so if you're playing the vienna this actually might form one of your model games to check out but also if you want some trainable vari variations at chessable check out king's crusher tv slash vienna so there's lots of nuances and resources explained there as well for free for a short and sweet vienna course okay hope you enjoyed that thanks very much